Hello, my mum and dad have a rotten door on their garage. So in this video, I'm gonna try and make them a new one. And I've got some pressure treated three by twos up here, left over from a previous project, which have been drying out for a few months. And I'm gonna use these to make the frame. So my goal in this one is to make a door using stuff that I have in the workshop already without spending too much money on materials. These two here are by far the straightest lengths. So these are gonna be my uprights. The ends are quite prone to checking and splitting, so I'm first cutting a few inches off at the mitre saw, and then I can mark up what I want the height of the door to be. Then I'm just double checking for flatness on my workbench, and these should be fine. I then need three rails which will be joined in between the two uprights. This wood is tantalised or pressure treated, that's why it has a green tint to it, but you can see that the treatment doesn't penetrate right through to the centre of the wood, which means it'll be more prone to rot and insect damage. So I'm applying some wood preservative to the end grain. It needs three coats ideally, allowing it to dry in between each one. I'm marking up the position of the rails onto the uprights so that I know where to cut mortises. And I'm going to do that at the router table using this eight mm spiral bit. I'll leave a link to this in the description box. The router table and routers in general are tools that I'm still getting acquainted with. In the past I've always favoured using other tools to get the job done, so more recently I'm trying to find reasons to use these tools more. Here I'm just using an off cut of the 3x2, which I'm using to position the fence so that I can get my cuts right where I want them. And rotating the workpiece between cuts means that my mortise is going to be nicely centred to the workpiece. Then I make some reference marks for where I want to start and stop my cuts to the ends of the work pieces and transferring those to the fence means that I can make the same cuts repeatedly to each work piece. This is the end result, I'll just need to remove that material in the middle later on. Then I can cut the mortise in the middle in almost the same way, although this time I just eyeballed the start and stop position. And I'm raising the bit in between passes to get the mortise to the full depth needed. Using my test piece again I can adjust the fence to remove the material in the centre and I got all of the mortises cut to a depth of around 35 millimeters, which was about as deep as I felt comfortable with raising this router bit. Maybe I could have got another five or 10 millimeters out of it, but like I said, with routers, I'm still learning. I can then use a chisel to square up the mortises and clean up the walls where needed. I used my calipers to measure and scribe the end of my rails ready for cutting the tenons. I'm using a pencil here just so that these lines show up better on camera and my combination square is used to mark up the length of the tenon. Using a Japanese pull saw to cut the cheeks of the tenon is a good option but using the band saw makes things quicker and I'm making sure to stay on the waist side of the line so that I can refine the fit of each tenon with chisels. And I can cut the shoulders there too. Once I've got a good fit, I just need to remove a bit more to complete the shoulders. As this material has rounded edges, I decided to add a round over to the end of my rails too, which I think looks nicer than a square edge butted against a rounded one. And I just did that with some 80 grit sandpaper. The rail in the middle needs shoulders on both sides as opposed to just one side like I chose to do with the top and bottom rails and I got that fitting nicely too. And at this point I'll get all of the parts labelled so that I know where they go back together. For the panels I'm using a piece of exterior grade MDF. I have this piece left over from a previous project when I made a gate about a year ago. I'll link to that video down below and to everyone who has asked, yes, the gate is holding up just fine, thank you. 
This stuff should last 50 years plus in exterior conditions, so I'm not worried about it. And it's 18mm thick, which will make for a really solid panel. Another good option for this though would be 15 or 18mm marine plywood. I want to cut a housing groove to accommodate the panel using the router table too, so after making a couple of test cuts to an offcut, I know that the fence is positioned correctly to get a nice snug fit. This time I just used a chisel to remove the material in the middle as that was the quicker option. At this point I can measure the size for the panels and I need to be careful to cut them so that they sit in the housing grooves but with a little bit of wiggle room so as not to make the glue up impossible. So my dad mentioned that he'd quite like to have a window in the door to let in more light and I have some of this 9mm plexiglass which I salvaged a while back from a library display stand. I'm going to use the track saw to cut this to size and then the block plane to remove the burr. Then I can mark around it to give me the shape I'll need for the opening and I realised here that it would have made more sense to cut the opening first and then cut the window to size but hopefully I can still achieve a nice fit. I want my opening to be 9mm smaller than the plexiglass so I'm carefully marking up an offset here and then I can use the track saw to cut the opening and the straw bite workshop waist side jigs are ideal for this kind of application for absolute precision. Basically they show you exactly where the cut line will be when you want to cut on what would normally be the waist side of the line. I'll link to these in the description box below. I finish up the cuts in the corners using my Japanese pull saw. and then clean up the edges with a chisel. So I have a 9mm rebate bit for the router which I can use to cut a rebate that the plexiglass will sit in. So this is quite a router heavy project in general really. I made multiple passes to get it to the depth I wanted and using a large washer with the same radius as the corners I can mark up the perspex and round over the corners at the disc sander. I added a bit of cardboard just to protect it from the metal table. So I mentioned this plexiglass was salvaged and as you can see there are quite a few scratches and scuffs on it so I'm going to attempt to clean it up using some of this liquid cutting compound which I had in a cupboard. I think this is usually used for car bodywork but it should help to cut through some of the damage and I'm using a buffing pad in the drill to apply it. This was never going to turn out perfect but it certainly made a big difference. And then I can buff it clean with a cotton cloth. After doing some final sanding I can test the fit of the plexiglass and it looked perfect. Here I'm masking up the edges and then adding silicon which I can then sit the window into. This is a low modulus builder's silicon, suitable for exterior use and I'll link to this in the description box below too. And I applied some weight and let it sit overnight. It's fair to say I was a bit nervous about this glue up and I'm using polyurethane glue here by the way because I know it works really well in exterior conditions. I'll link to this stuff below too. I knew it was going to be tricky to get all of the pieces of the frame together and get the panels fitted inside the housing grooves all at the same time and it was every bit as challenging as I expected so there's a whole lot of panicking and awkward clamping going on here. I probably would have made life easier for myself if my housing grooves hadn't have been so tight to the panels. You'll see that I even used a block plane just to add a small bevel to one edge of the MDF to help me get the panel fitted. So that was an absolute nightmare. I knew it was going to be tricky but I underestimated just how tricky it was going to be and um, because this glue sets pretty quick it's a 30 minute adhesive but it goes off within a few minutes really so I really should have asked for another pair of hands to be able to get it all together. As things stand at the moment I've got everything sitting nice and square um, but unfortunately I couldn't get my other upright fitted because the glue was just going off so I'm going to have to do this in two separate glue ups and I'm a bit worried about that because the chances are 
that my tenons are no longer going to line up with my mortises once all of these clamps are off and the glue is dry. So not great, but um, hopefully it'll be salvageable. In fact, I think what I'm going to do just before I leave this to set is measure the distances between my mortises and just double check that against where my tenons are. So that's eight, six, nine mil. That looks like eight, six, nine to me. So that's good. And I've got eight, three, six there. And that looks like eight, three, four. So I might have a bit of trouble at the top. We will see. I was anxious about this one, so I ended up coming out in the evening once the glue was dry to remove the clamps and see what the situation was. So the bottom and centre mortises line up pretty well, but this top one is off by a couple of millimetres, so I'm going to have to pair some off this tenon to get it to fit. Yes. If only the first clear up was that easy. This seemed like a good time to seal up the other side of the window and again I'm using masking tape just to keep clean lines and I can remove the excess foam from the polyurethane glue. I mixed up some epoxy with a bit of sawdust and I can use this to fill any imperfections in the wood like these knots and cracks. Once this is dry, I can sand off the excess and get it nice and smooth. This door will need a sill at the bottom just to help it shed water away from the door and I'm going to use another piece of 3x2 for this. First I'm going to cut an angle on the edge at the table saw. And then I can cut the bottom nice and flat and the angle will be the same here so no need to adjust the angle of the blade. And then I want to cut a little drip groove which will help stop water running back up the sill towards the door. And I have a cove bit here which I can use to cut that. So it's back to the router table again. This sill is going to need a slight angle cut on the end to allow the door to swing open. So I'm marking that up here and cutting it at the mitre saw. When I asked my dad what colour he wanted the door to be and he said a mid-brown colour, I was a bit gutted to be honest, but the customer is always right, especially when the customer is your dad. So here is a colour I like to call putrid brown, although on the label it actually says dark oak. And this is an exterior grade water-based stain and it'll need three coats in total. I denibbed in between coats with some 400 grit paper. Here I'm applying a final bit of sealant to the inside of the door. Here's how it looks after a second coat, starting to get a bit of depth to it but still a pretty ugly colour. And here is coat number three going on. If you'd like to see me fit this door, make sure you are subscribed to the channel as that will be the next video that I put out. Aside from the colour, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking so far, although I have to say that glue up was not a pleasant experience. And so far this project has taken me a total of about 14 and a half hours. Please subscribe for more videos if you'd like to help support the channel, plus get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. You'll find links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description box below. Thank you for watching.